Good day fellow investors! In this video you will get pretty much everything you need to know for investing in oil stocks in 2024 and we'll use Exxon as an example. And as I was researching I also checked all the articles on Seeking Alpha and everyone there has a buy rating for Exxon. I read all of those articles to get more information and summarize that in this video. And to give you what means we'll do an analysis of Exxon that pretty much reflects the oil industry, we'll discuss the long-term oil supply and demand forecasts where there are two diverging and that is also the risk and reward for investing and conclude with an explanation of what can go right and what can go wrong so that you can see how it fits you. And let's immediately start with why Exxon is a buy. We have a technical article, the fifth wave rally that is coming in and will push the stock higher growth in demand, crude barrel around $90 up from the current situation, pioneer acquisition will boost cash flows, valuation is cheap so it has to go 21% up to be fairly valued, emerging markets are going to push higher oil demand, for now China is still the leader with 23% with global imports, then they have growth in Permian, Guyana, geopolitical factors, Iran issues might push oil prices higher, pioneer acquisition, cheaper resources, cash flows, 8% below fair value, sector rotation as investors switch from tech into commodities again, and we have the thesis of oil at 100 for longer because of inflation. So everyone thinks it's a buy, the market capitalization is 407 billion, P ratio is 10 and the dividend yield is getting close to 4%, add another 3% of 15 billion of planned buybacks and that is the return on Exxon now. But let's now dig into the business, the developments there to see what are the fundamentals that later we can use in the oil scenarios. From the last earnings call, last Friday I think, so earnings of 36 billion on oil prices, 15% return on capital employed, that's usually the target for these commodities companies, they are investing in growth, innovative solutions, they have also lithium I think, lowering emissions, standard chat there, they have earnings of 36 billion, cash flow from operations 55 billion, they are working on savings, they have their dividends, they are investing big in repurchases and the target there is 15%. I don't know the total shareholder return is that high, but yes, maybe with the dividends it gets there. Of course, when it comes to oil and gas businesses, it's all about oil prices at the end. What they produce is pretty much standard, can be planned, and here you can see the impact of the lower price of oil in 2023 compared to 2022. Earnings went from 59 to 38 billion. If we check the average prices, 2023 was around 82, 2022 was pretty much higher at 100. So now pause, look at this chart and tell me what is one certainty with oil prices? You can check it right in the comments, but let me see if you think like I do. Okay, I hope you have paused the video. My insight here is that oil prices are pretty much never flat. Exuberant, crashing, exuberant, crashing, exuberant, and now they are going down again. Of course, I cannot predict whether they will go up or down next, but I can look at the sentiment and that is also an indication of when to invest. We had lows of 50, 2015, a little bit lower, 2020 high, but usually after high prices come low prices and after low prices come high prices. What is important to know here that a 20% decline in oil prices led to a 40% decline in Exxon's profits. Of course, they have improved their reserves from what I see with lower pioneer extraction costs, which is always good, but again, a question here, they didn't acquire it here, they acquired it here now with oil prices much much higher and the company four times more expensive than just a while ago. 
but okay, they are continuing with their growth projects, not only upstream, midstream, downstream, so offering scale, security, integration, nothing wrong there. Let's check how does this look from a financial perspective. They have good cash flows, stable cash flows, dividends and buybacks were their focus alongside capex. The return on average capital employed fell down because of lower oil prices, but 15% thus at 80 oil is what they can offer. Of course, if oil goes to 60, this goes to 5% and then it doesn't look as stellar. Total assets are 360 billion close to the market capitalization. Nothing wrong there. If I look a little bit at liabilities, long-term debt is pretty low at 40 billion. Again, all well there, high property plant and equipment, high tangible value, so okay, it looks okay from that perspective, no big risk there. So when it comes to oil stocks, it's all about oil prices and therefore we have to analyze the oil sector and the forecasts going forward. And the key thing to understand here is that demand growth in the last two years was around 2 million barrels per day. So everything was positive for the oil sector and thus higher oil prices. However, there are different forecasts going forward. The OPEC oil cartel sees no peak in oil demand on the horizon, more growth, they have increased their long-term forecasts by 6 million barrels per day and oil demand to keep rising for another 20 years. And here is their forecast. So over the last two years, they have increased the forecast by 6 million barrels and they have increased the demand growth, especially over the next six, seven years, and then slowly flattening out. I've read a little bit their outlook by 2025, and their opinion is that the pushback against fossil fuels has subdued, and that the green energy transition will take more than that one initially expected. We have world population trends still very positive, growing Middle East and Africa, other Asia, that will increase demand for oil, and they have a projection of average growth for OECD countries of around 1.5, 1.8 and 4% for emerging markets, developing economies. And that will lead to higher demand from 100 billion barrels to 116 billion barrels per day. So nothing changes there. We keep consuming oil and no green revolution or transformation. And then on supply, you can see here that all those companies can supply exactly as much oil as is needed. And to do that, they need to invest 14 trillion US dollars or around 600 billion per year to reach that supply and the companies are investing on that. But I have looked here at uh, OPEC presentation from 2004 that I found researching and there the projection was that by 2025 or now the demand will be 115 million barrels per day. 2022 was 99 and there will be slow growth, maybe we get to 101 by 2025, so that's 15 million barrels, and that's a huge difference for projections. So we cannot know whether it will be 115 or 100 or 90 going forward over the years, but this will have a huge impact on oil stocks and oil prices. If I look at the counter projection from the International Energy Agency, you can see here that we have had 2 million barrels per day increase in demand 2022-2023, but after that the growth should subdue and be much lower at around half a million barrels per day, which is in contrast with the projections that OPEC and oil companies have because everyone, even Exxon, is increasing investments in growth and production. The energy agency says that growth will taper off as Russia invasion of Ukraine speed up the transition away from fossil fuels and of course electric vehicles continue to arrive and take away from that demand of oil. The use of gasoline 
is the second biggest oil product will go already in decline from 2023 and the need for combustible fossil fuels will hit an absolute peak of 81 million barrels a day in 2028 and then start declining and you can see here upstream spending is surging because everyone has the money to invest oil prices are still high and high prices in a commodity environment usually lead to low prices somewhere down the road. Of course, I expect volatility while everyone has pretty linear stable models. And the funny thing is that if we want to achieve net zero emissions by 2020, we should halt all investments in new oil, not spend 500 billion per year, but simply stop to reach. So if your politician is talking about net zero emissions by 2050, then all new investments in oil should be halted, which is not happening. Thus, the green transition is just hanky-panky. So before going into evaluation, we have two scenarios. One is the green transition scenario, one is the Opel fossil fuels forever scenario. I think that the truth is always somewhere in between and that the volatility of the markets, now markets are towards OPEC, maybe two years from now will be towards the green transition. And if you can go and play around those cycles and prices, then you can invest opportunistically in a cycle industry like the commodities, in this case, the oil industry. Investing for the long term usually leads people to buy at wrong prices and let me show you that. With Exxon, so at oil at 100, they make 55 billion in profits. As oil goes lower, they make less, less. And at 40, they should make nothing. And that is the reality when it comes to the business. And I think that oil prices will be above 100, but also maybe close to 40 in the next 10 years. Because oil prices go like this, usually models are like this. And if those go at 40 and then we have a dividend count, then that might look like a investment. But of course, the question is, will demand grow or not? Demand will slow down in a recession, which is usually the best time to buy oil stocks or fear of a recession. And if oil prices go lower, people always think high prices will be there forever, low prices will be there forever, and then also the market capitalization goes down, the dividend yield goes up to 6-7%, and then Exxon will always likely make the money to pay the dividend over the year. Keep in mind, we have average yearly prices. If the average yearly price is 50, which means that the top in the year is 70 and the low will be 35. Here, you have to consider buying. A very interesting situation is with China. China is the largest importer of oil. Everyone is so negative about China, but so positive about oil stocks. Again, like Apple, like here, there is always the data about China and then the market sentiment. Speaking of forecasts, it's always about models while oil prices are always about volatility. But the key question is, will there be faster or slower growth in demand? And if you look at the position of a company, I never like to buy companies when they do a lot of buybacks. Here we have high Exxon prices, high Exxon prices, high Exxon prices, and those were all followed by lower Exxon prices. And I will show you also this, repurchases of common stock, the highest at the peak, 2006, 7, 8. Repurchases of common stock, 2000. 11, 12, 13, 14. Then when the stock goes down, absolutely no repurchases. Now that the stock is again high, 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 they are repurchasing again. So when they say that their shareholder return includes repurchases, I totally disagree because if we have a down cycle, a recession, then all these billions are wasted. So that's my opinion. They should do the opposite of what they are doing, but that they will never do that. The thing is that we can discuss the investing risk and reward of the sector. I personally don't agree with anyone on seeking alpha. It's not a buy now. It can be maybe a hold, collecting the dividend and then buying more if it goes lower, but too risky. What would make Exxon a value investment could be the better question. And the question is, 
at what price do I invest in Exxon so that the worst case scenario, the A energy agency scenario, sustainable growth transition pushes forward that even then I am okay. At 40, let's say oil at 40 because we have a recession or whatever, Exxon would make, I think this was 2016, I think they would still make 15 billion for the dividend. They have now lower production costs. And you can see here that the dividend now is 3%, but it was also 9% in the past. And if they can keep the dividend in whatever oil environment and you want to buy with more value investing, then you should wait for a dividend of around 6%, which is unfortunately 50% down. On other oil stocks, those are pretty much well known. You know the production, you can put them into a model and it is fairly priced out there. So there are no surprises, but when the oil sector is in a downturn, when it looks ugly, that's the time to look into commodities and cyclicals, and that's the time to look for market inefficiencies. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this. I'll make a video when oil stocks are a buy again, or if you want more, you can just join my research platform and you will get an email when oil stocks are a buy again.